What up guys, today I wanted to give you a little treat, depending on your definition of treat, and give you a sample, an actual sample of an exercise from the exercise library on my app. So one, some people that use the app just like that exercise library for what it is. So you can basically pick a body part, look at 10, 20 different exercises per that body part, and go ahead and get a deeper understanding. So watch a video. The videos will basically, as you'll see, kind of always explain, you know, what's the purpose of the exercise? Um, how do we do the setup? What are some form and, you know, tips and cues as you're going through the exercise? And then also give a whole lot of variations as far as is there gonna be a different setup? Um, is there gonna be some different options? What happens with all of them? Um, and the whole point of that in and of itself, as I say, programming is great. What's on paper, of course, is great. You wanna have a good structured program. You wanna have a plan to follow. But much more important than what is on paper, it's how you're doing that what. And that's my professional opinion of people that I've seen that have the highest level of success all across the board. So from you know different ages, different experience levels, different goals, you know, from someone that's just doing it kind of for fun to someone completing on the Olympia stage. It's never anything written on paper that separates anybody. It's all how they do things. So that's the purpose of the exercise library. And again, I say every one of the programs on my app. So at the time of you're watching this, there's at least 20 plus programs on my app. Every single exercise on every single program, when you're actually in the program, logging the logbook and logging your weights and reps, which is within the app itself, there's a video for every single exercise on the program for that reason. So you can come in, you don't have to watch the videos, you could just follow your workouts that day, log the stuff in the integrated logbook, carry on with your life. Or if you're ever doing something like, man, am I doing this right? Or do I want a deeper understanding? Click right there actually within the program itself and you can actually watch the video directly from the exercise library. Again, to make sure not just the what, but the how are you doing it the right way. Um, so again, here's a sample, like I said, every single exercise on the programs and on every single program is in the exercise library. And, uh, and if nothing else, just to guys give you a sample of um, what that's like, what that looks like, and then also hopefully to help you out with this specific exercise. So hopefully that helps. Um, and if you guys have any questions about the app, wanna try the app, links down below. You can try the app for free for seven days. So take advantage of that. Um, and if not, then enjoy the free knowledge and enjoy the gains that come with better form, better execution, and a deeper understanding of how to do this exercise. All right, guys, so today I have some form setup tips and thought process behind doing this behind the back cable lateral raise is what I just decided to name it right now. Um, honestly, I said this is something I did a few years ago. I used to do it more to kind of bias front delts, but it's also a very good side delt exercise. So I'm gonna share with you uh, the thought process for it, the quick setup, and then I'm gonna break into a couple different setups depending on what your gym may have and dig a little bit deeper into the exercise. Um, but the thought process, the same for every single exercise, you know, is what do we have for alignment? What do we have for profiles? What do we have for bracing? And how do we make this a good exercise for overall delt development, but definitely gonna target a little bit more of that side delt. Um, so as far as what makes this good from an alignment standpoint, so like I kind of said in the beginning, the thing with these, and I'll get into this towards the end, you can of course use handles, cuffs are my preferred one, but you're gonna basically get the cables crossing behind your back. So if I've got the facing this way, the right side cable, it's gonna go into the left arm. And this is the easiest way for me to set up. So just go ahead and put it behind your back and walk over here, then walk all the way over to this one. And so get it in a nice easy position. Don't try and pull the cable off and then pull it on and then just walk down and slide the cuffs on. Obviously, it's even a little bit easier if you have handles, but that's the real quick way to go. Put the one on first, walk all the way over until you can just stick your hand in. And then from here, the nice part about alignment in here is it's one of the absolute easiest to get alignment right. So one, the further back you stand, basically your arms are gonna come a little bit more out to your side. The further forward you stand, the more your arms are gonna go a little bit forward. And I don't think there's really one right or wrong. I would pick somewhere kind of in the middle. So let's call this like, you know, if there's 90 this way, and 90 this way straight forward, you know, we want somewhere around a 45 degree angle in between. And really the number one thing to check for alignment here is just to make sure when you're at the top, that cable goes right through your arm, right through your shoulder joint. So it's really, really easy to see. So if I went here and I brought them too far back to the side, you'll see that cable doesn't line up. And if you try and bring them too far forward when they cross, the cables basically run into your body. So they start to wrap around. So I like it because I'm saying this for myself, it's idiot proof, I can be an idiot, to make sure that okay, am I, you know, if, even if I was slightly off here or slightly off here, I can literally pull up to a point where that cable is right on my arm and actually make sure am I aligned right. As far as, as far as profiles go, it's got a great profile because you can easily make it heavier at the bottom to the mid-range and getting lighter to the top. And at the end of this video, I'll kind of discuss why you might want to manipulate that from time to time. And then the only issue that I have with this exercise 
compared to some other rays or cable rays variations I've done is bracing. Um, now one, I'm gonna say two, a couple things with this with bracing is there's not a ton of load being used on this. So uh, there's not a ton of load and all of it's not being pulled backwards. So Larry, if I was right in between the cables, you actually wouldn't need any bracing front to back because the cables are basically bracing against each other. As I walk forward, not all of the cable, but basically some of the load of the cable is pulling back. So the ideal bracing would be something pressing against my back that keeps me completely still, but also I can technically even push into a little bit as I'm raising. That would be perfect bracing. Um, I'm gonna get into a second why that is not always easy to do. I'll show with a bench setup because someone's gonna say, couldn't you use a bench? Of course you could if the bench worked perfect. Could I use another bench in the front? Will that provide some value? I'll kind of go through that. But that's really the quick setup I wanted to show. So if you just want a quick setup, the easiest thing most people will have access to is just set up the cables somewhere around hand height. You know, So if you're looking at hand height, somewhere around here, so maybe I could have put these a teeny bit higher, but this is a fine spot too. I'll clarify that in a minute. Um, again, you could use handles or you could use cuffs. You know, cross them how I showed you how to get in and then basically find that spot somewhere 45 degrees in the middle and bring the cable pretty much all the way up till it's right on. Even if you go right on to the arm itself, the torque is still not zero. So again, the cable would actually have to pass through the center axis of your shoulder joint, which unless you did some sort of painful surgery mid-set, is impossible to happen. So even though it gets very light at the top, you can actually bring them above shoulder height up here and get a really short, hard contraction of the delt. And so that's the quick setup where again, you would even at a gym don't have to have cuffs. You could have minimal equipment handles. You can find your comfy spot and you're good to go. Um, so the kind of more advanced stuff right now that I'll kind of get into a little bit more is varying cable height. Now, if I had to, again, just to keep things simple, give you a height that I think would be good, I would say anywhere from um, hand height. So when I go at the bottom, if you, if you put the cable at hand height, that's gonna make that start position the hardest. So that's gonna make the lengthen position the hardest. And basically it gets lighter through the entire range of motion. And as you come to the top, we'll really drop off. Like I showed when I demoed, that cable will basically press against your arm when you're up in this position. So be very, very low torque, very little tension, which overall is fine. Um, if I was really kind of splitting hairs on this one, I think even slightly lower than here would be good height. So if I had to kind of make up something a little bit arbitrary, but would be right for most people, I would actually say somewhere around knee height. And I'll show you why I say that in a minute. So get that just below the barbell. So why below knee height? Well, again, the most important trend with a profile for a single joint, in my opinion, is that it gets lighter as it comes to the shortened position. Depending on the muscle, depending on the joint, you could go back and forth with, is the lengthened position the strongest? Is the mid-range position the strongest? And at some point in time, like I said, just a general trend of a profile is gonna be better off. And in my opinion, the comparison of just doing a dumbbell lateral raise, which is the complete opposite profile you'd want. So what's gonna be the difference here? If I'm in my same position and I raise up here, so it's not gonna be quite the heaviest in this position, it'll be the heaviest right around there. So when that cable's 90 to my arm, that's about the heaviest. So it's a little teeny bit lighter, although extremely heavy still in the length and range, actually really overloading kind of the heaviest, when I say heaviest again, I mean torque, in that kind of mid range. And as I raise to the top, so the difference here is if I have the cable lower, you'll see it doesn't drop off quite as much, a drop off. So again, if this cable is here, that's less torque and overall less work, less tension on my delts. By here, it's still dropping off, getting lighter significantly, but there's a little bit more load in the top position. So I would argue you probably don't want it getting quite that light. You probably want it maybe right about here is gonna be a little bit of a better um, overall profile. But to be honest, that's just splitting hairs. I wanted to basically show what happens as you move these up and down. Basically, the lower you go with them, that you're changing, you know, instead of the first position being the heaviest, you're gonna make somewhere in the mid position the heaviest, mid range. So if I went even lower, instead of here, it might be here. And then it's all gonna get lighter to the top, but it's just a matter of how light does it get. The lower you get, there's gonna be overall more torque comparably to that start position of gonna be at hand height. So just go on, I wanna show you what happens as you adjust the cables. And again, real life gym decisions, what does that really mean? I would mess around with it and just see what's most comfortable for you. Some people really hate the feeling of it getting that light at the top. So again, maybe even try closer to the bottom. And like I said, you're still gonna have a good trend. You know, you're still gonna have something where there is good amount of torque or tension at the bottom, a lot through the mid range and still some at the top as well too, which again, from a length tension standpoint, matches what your delt's actually capable of doing for output. Now to get into some of the nitty gritty as far as bracing goes, on paper, the thing that would make the most sense, grab the old bench here, is to have a bench like this. Um, so again, like I said in the beginning, wouldn't I want something to push back into that keeps everything nice and still? Yes, I would. 
Um, but you get some problems with this that's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt. Now again, all this pain in the butt stuff, it's all relative. If this isn't a pain in the butt to you and you're like, I don't know what the big deal is, then this might technically be a better exercise. But one, you're gonna see right away, as soon as I sit down, what do I lose? I lose the ability, so when I'm actually in the seated position, even when these are all the way at the bottom, so let's put these all the way at the bottom, relative to my body, relative to the trained joints, this is gonna be essentially the same position as this start position I showed, setting the cables at um, hand height, right? So if I'm standing and I set the cables at hand height and I'm seated, and now my hand is basically at the same height as that cable, this is the same profile as the first profile I showed standing, right? So I said, well, what if you prefer um, there being a little bit less tension here and a little bit more tension here? You lose that option seated because that's, again, as low as the cables go. I, as low as the cables go, I couldn't put them any lower. So one, you lose a little bit of versatility with the profile. You basically only have the first profile option, which, again, may not be a big deal, still good profile. Two, it's a pain in the butt, more of a pain in the butt to get in. So you can still do the same thing I showed before. You know, you step over here, put one on, step over here, put the other one. Obviously, same thing you could still do with handles. And then, depending on your bench, you can actually have, now this setup I think right here is actually not too bad. You can see that basically, well, I'm almost right up against the bench. So some of this, if you raise up, you see that, how the cables actually catch on the bench. And the design of this bench, they're kind of slipping right in that hole here. Even if you didn't have that little hole there, Lots of times the cable actually slides on the bench itself. So you can see what I just did there. If I'm doing this race, it literally gets stuck there or slides there or whatever. So it's a purely semantic thing where basically the cables can get actually scraping against the bench. Depending on the width of the bench, depending on how much metal is behind the bench, let's say it's an adjustable bench where you actually have the you know, metal arm of it or whatever. The short story is the bench just kind of can get in the way of the cables. Um, and again, aside from just perceivably that not that bothering you, that bothers me, that catching there and that feeling, um, it can also actually take away during the exercise if it's actually changing the path of the cable or something. So if you have an option like this setup that works very well for you, fantastic. Then use a bench. Again, it's going to be slightly better bracing. Better bracing pretty much always translates to you being able to handle more load. And obviously, too, the big thing for me, if you're seated, on a bench, then I don't have to worry about my ankles moving, my knees moving, my hips moving, any of that moving actually affecting my shoulder joint. And I always joke, I have the wiggles. So if I'm doing an exercise, if I'm doing this standing, I will kind of almost always be doing this type of thing. I never even noticed that I'm doing it until the video plays back. Um, and it's been like that since basically age two as far as I know. So it's not something I'm really gonna correct right now. So I actually first saw this setup from Hunter, Hunter Labrada. I'm not sure if he's the first person to do it. Um, but I was, same thing, worried kind of from a semantic standpoint, how would it work with my bench, all that good stuff. Um, and turns out, it's like he was doing it, obviously it sets up pretty well, not too much of a pain in the butt, um, and turns into probably my favorite option. So what are you really gaining from the bench? Now again, the cables are pulling this way. So does this give you anything to push into in opposition of the load? No, so this really doesn't provide bracing as far as my definition of bracing. But like I said, one, even if you're really, really strong, it's not that much load that's actually pulling you back. Two, if you actually change your center of mass of just balancing here, just leaning forward, if you actually press into this hard enough, then you can actually basically make it to the point where you couldn't pull off or the cables aren't strong enough to actually pull you off even if you wanted to. But more than anything else, it provides something that gives additional feedback. So I can't or really have to notice if I'm doing this, like if I'm doing the bouncy bouncies while I'm doing the exercise, I notice my face is moving up and down, my chest is moving up and down. So really it's something for some outside, um, just raising awareness of what your body is doing and are you actually keeping still. So the nice part with this is the setup is exactly the same. So again, do one cable first, walk over, get the next cable, and then you can just basically step right in to the bench. And so you can see this is very easy to do this same setup. So I got my setup here. You can adjust the cables to adjust the profile. And again, if I wanted the same thing to be a little bit more forward, I could slide the bench forward. If I wanted to bring the cables a little bit more out to the side, then I could basically just slide the bench back and bring it a little bit more to the side and then still have that cable line up through my upper arm when I'm at the top. So I wanted to show all of those for anybody that wants more detail, a little bit better understanding of the setup and even explaining the concepts of, well, why would someone do it without a bench behind them? Why would someone do it with a bench behind them? Why would somebody do it facing in on this? Um, again, instead of just monkey see, monkey do, I think it's better for you guys to have a little bit of a deeper understanding of why the various setups um, and why would somebody maybe choose one over the other. Um, and just the last thing from performance, I didn't really even talk about a whole lot on this one. 
Um, I, I prefer the cuffs for a lot of reasons. So again, the load being slightly closer to the shoulder joint, all other things being the same is actually less shear at the GH joint, which not a huge deal, but arguably long-term for how much volume people like to do could be a good thing for longevity. I've had people ask me too, can I put the cuffs higher? You can put the cuffs wherever you want. The only issue with putting the cuffs higher is you're gonna need more load to have the same amount of torque. So it can be a little bit tougher to get in. But yeah, mess around with it. Some people say it actually feels better on my shoulder joints up here. It should actually, that creates less shear than here and less shear than here. And the other reason as well too is if I do this, not only the whole time people don't think about it, not only is your grip working the whole time, but if I'm holding a dumbbell or I'm holding a handle, basically I'm working wrist extensors or doing a pretty strong isometric the whole time. So grip aside is working. I basically, if I let, just let my hand relax holding onto a handle, this is what it wants to happen. So if this is staying still, strong isometric here. So not that any of that's bad, but if you do heavy enough sets, long enough drop sets, enough volume, that shit can stink once you've done one, two, three, four, five drop sets or something you know, stupid depending on the type of mood you're in. So that's why I slightly prefer the cuffs, um, but both work well from there too. And then as far as hand position, don't overthink it. You know, Palms down is a pretty good spot for this. For the most part, again, if this is my axis, you know, I can say, okay, imagine, when I say axis, just imagine basically the way a hinge of a door would be. So I'm moving, just imagine the way that hinge would look. So that hopefully makes sense to everybody watching. That's the hinge. Everything above this hinge, you know, from the GH joint, on that axis above can work. What is gonna bisect the top in the exact opposition of that hinge is what can do the most work. So when I'm on top here, that side delt is doing the most work, but you'll see some of your front delt, even a teeny bit of your rear delt is on top, not much for rear delt. So your front delt actually gets a decent amount of work on this too. I've done these in the past where if you externally rotate more, you can see how if it's the same axis, now there's just more front delt on top and a little less side delt. So all other things being the same, if you do this, it's just gonna shift a little bit more emphasis to front delt. But again, both of them are working really both times. If you go from, you know, wherever you're doing 30 pounds on this for 10 reps with perfect form, to 80 pounds, you know, with 10 reps on this with perfect form, a whole lot of stuff up here is gonna get bigger. Uh, but mess around with that as well too. That's the beauty of these cable positions. Again, I don't think there's actually anything wrong with doing too much this plane. You know, aside from the fact that the cables will run into you, I don't think there's too much wrong with this plane. But again, somewhere in the middle for most people is just gonna feel the most comfortable. So that's the one that I would kind of pick and go with. And then same as everything else, any other exercise, you know, controlled form, own the end ranges more than anything else. So make sure you're not bouncing on the bottom. This is where it's the heaviest and the hardest. So make sure you're not launching or bouncing. Use that load, use that torque it creates at the joint and make sure that you're actually training your delts where it's the hardest. And same thing as you contract hard through the top, you'll have tension and torque the whole time. So really try and keep nice, even reps through the entire range of motion. And again, the common sense thing, make sure that you're not using momentum, make sure that you're actually using your muscles. And that's pretty much it on this. So again, real, real quick recap. Alignment, just make sure that cable, cable is going right through your upper arm and the shoulder joint. Profiles, anywhere basically from hand height, this is the short guy, but hopefully you got a little deeper understanding. Hand height to maybe about knee height. Again, relative to the cables, relative to a standing body, or obviously reproduce the same thing seated, is gonna make a pretty darn good profile. Um, and then as far as bracing, well, either standing is easiest, then you just have to use your body to brace and stabilize a little bit more or the bench on the back, bench on the chest. Bench on the chest is probably my preferred option. So um, hopefully that helps and uh, get after those side delts, getting some big old cannonball delts.